Hi, welcome to another episode of the Sankofa Pan African series. In this episode, we'll be continuing the exciting story of the kingdom of Aksum, which was powerful enough to rule parts of Arabia. Please, if you've not yet subscribed to our channel, take a moment and do so. Thank you. Now, the Aksum Empire was divided into Aksum proper and its vassal kingdoms, which had rulers and which paid tributes to it. Aksumites called their king Negos, but these rulers were known as king of kings in the vassal kingdoms in order to differentiate them from the local rulers. As is the case with um, Egypt, because of Aksum's greatness, attempts have been made to place its origin outside of Africa. However, Aksum did not originate from one of the Semitic um, Sabian kingdoms in the northern part of Arabia, as some Western historians claim. Historical research points to the fact that Aksum developed as a local power. According to Tekit Sadik Mercuria, groups of people of Semitic origin crossed the Red Sea and settled in northern Ethiopia. And um, they were uh, probably because they were searching for more fertile and richer lands than their own um, desert countries. So what this tells us is that Aksum was prosperous before the Semitic people migrated there. Now, this also explains the ethnic and cultural similarities between Aksumites and Southern Arabians. The earliest recorded mention of Aksum was made during the second century by Claudius Ptolemy, who noted that it was populated by Ethiopians. I have noted in previous episodes that the word Ethiopia um, was generally used by, uh, by historians, um, Greek historians, ancient historians, to describe people of dark skin. Heliodorus, a Greco-Phoenician um, author of the third century, also describes the arrival of the Aksumite ambassadors as equals and allies of the Meroitic king in his novel, Ethiopica. Now, by 270 AD, the fame of Axiom had reached Persia, Persia, where it was considered one of the four greatest empires in the world. At the height of its uh, glory, between the 3rd and 6th century AD, Axiom was the largest market, serving the whole of northeastern Africa. The Byzantine Kingdom, um, the Byzantine Empire, was desirous to remain on good terms with Axiom in the face of the Persian threat that they were faced, uh, facing in the Red Sea. Axiomite uh, merchants conducted trade as far as Alexandria in Egypt and across the Nile River. Axiom dominated the Red Sea coast until the end of the 9th century AD, exercising its uh, influence from the shores of the Gulf of Aden to Zeila on the northeastern coast uh, on the northeastern coastal areas of what is now known as uh, Somalia and uh, Djibouti. Between the 2nd and 3rd centuries AD, Axiom's growth as a trading empire gradually eroded the power of Meroe. Meroe at the time was the southern administrative center of the Nubian kingdom of Kush. Aksum finally invaded Meroe around the 4th century, bringing about its fall. I, I talked a bit more about this in the episode we dealt uh, uh, with um, 
the kingdom of Meroe. It was also during the 4th century that the kings of Aksum became Christianized, thereby consolidating their relationship with Egypt, which was then under Byzantine rule. Now, around the same period, Aksum extended its authority into southern Arabia and was by the 6th century able to subjugate Yemen, which, had which then became its vassal state. Its influence there lasted until the end of the 6th century when Persians invaded South Arabia and brought Aksumite influence there to a close. Aksum remained a major empire until 1270 when under a Zagwe dynasty, it was conquered by King Yekuno Amlak, an Abyssinian. This conquest marked the beginning of the Ethiopian or Abyssinian Empire under Solomid rulers. And uh, please don't forget, like our videos, share with your friends, and um, subscribe if you've not yet done so. See you next time.